This is the Thermalrite Frozen Note 360 ARGB. It's an affordable yet strikingly stylish all-in-one CPU cooler from Thermalrite. It has a price that'll freeze you in your tracks, but does it perform well enough to not leave you in the cold? Well, that's what we're gonna find out right here, right now on Robitech. Let's get this out of the way first. What exactly is a Note and why is it frozen? That question stumped more than one member of our team, so we turned to our dear old professor Google for the answer. It turns out that Note translates to night in Italian. So we actually are working with the Thermalrite Frozen Night. So if you're into cold nights, it sounds like Thermalrite is ready to tuck your CPU in for a long winter's nap with this AIO. On the surface, the cooler appears to be a compelling option for budget builders, and it even has options in either white or black. So no matter which side of the monochrome you fall on, Thermalrite has got you covered. Or better put, they have your aesthetic covered because even though the hardware is black or white, this is a cooler that embraces RGB in a big way. The fans on the Frozen Note are RGB equipped and can even be customized using software from your motherboard that you probably already have. Its pump head goes a step further with a dual RGB light ring on top Top of an infinity mirror. So it's rings within rings, creating kind of an RGBception, which sounds a lot like a PC DIY thriller with a twist ending. In appearance, the Frozen Note is pretty impressive for the price, but let's find out if the Frozen Night can get the thermals right. Let's get to know it a bit better, starting with the price. As we teased a second ago, the Frozen Note is on the budget end of the spectrum, coming in at $55 to $60 for the 360 millimeter version and around $47 for the 240 millimeter one. When we look across this price, range, this is one of the rare cases where Thermalrite's biggest competitor is actually itself. There are a few alternatives out there, like the Up Here U260TC or the ID Cooling FX360, but we haven't tested those, so we can't really talk about the performance, and you'd be rolling the dice with some of the smaller brands. That's probably not a risk that everyone is willing to take, especially when it comes to liquid in your PC. So really, Thermalrite has this section of the market cornered. In this $100 or less price point, the company has some alternatives, including the Aqua Elite 360, which which you can watch our review of right here. While we do like to see diversity and competition at every level, the Frozen Note offers some competitive features for its asking price, even if there isn't a lot of competition here. I mean, it's a 360 millimeter AIO with plenty of RGB that can bump the aesthetics of your PC up to the next level, if you're into RGB and infinity mirrors. Now, I mentioned the infinity mirror on the pump head earlier, but there's more to this story. What we would typically think of as the pump head or the CPU block, it doesn't actually house the pump. Instead, the pump is up by the radiator in a plastic chamber between its tube. So it's definitely not an Asetek pump like you'll find in AIOs from like bigger brands like Corsair or NZXT, but it comes with a five-year warranty and is rated for a lifespan that averages 40,000 hours. Now keep in mind that different doesn't always mean bad, but what really matters is how frozen the frozen night actually keeps your CPU during those late night Civilization 7 sessions where you're just one more turn away from turning in for the night. But before we get there, this AIO needs to find its way into your PC, so let's talk about installation. And when it comes to compatibility, if you're using a PC from the days when the Intel Core i5-2500K was cool, there's a good chance the Frozen Note will work inside of your system. It's compatible with more than a decade's worth of sockets for both AMD and Intel, and includes the hardware to mount them. For Intel, that means everything from LGA1156 to LGA1700, or at least according to Thermalrite's documentation. However, we do know based off of Intel specs that LGA1851 should absolutely be fine here. This means it can cool everything from the Core i7-860 to the latest Core Ultra 200S processors. For AMD, the Frozen Note covers everything from the FM1 socket in the grand old days of Athlon, all the way to the latest AM5 socket. And for everyone keeping track, that's 16 years of support for Intel and 14 for AMD. So it's safe to say that this cooler will work in your system. That is if your 16-year-old PC case can actually support a 360 millimeter AIO. Now, when we added the Frozen Note to our test bench, installation went smoothly, but there are definitely some considerations we discovered if you're a new builder. Now the Frozen Note comes with thermal paste, which is a nice addition, but you'll have to add it yourself. Now if you're a builder taking on your first system, there's something to be said for pre-applied thermal paste on other AIOs to keep things simple, but we understand the extra step that can add overall production cost. As for the fans, they do come pre-installed, which saves you a few minutes compared to installing them yourself. However, between daisy chaining all of the RGB cables and each fan to the splitter, cable managing is kind of a necessity and is going to take some time. Now the hardware to mount to your motherboard snaps onto the water block with a twist and lock system, which you can find pretty convenient. 
For Intel CPUs, you'll need to use the back plate, which gives you four points to tighten it down with. But for AMD, the Frozen Note uses the mounting clips that come with your motherboard. This isn't our favorite mounting method. If you're an experienced builder, this should feel all too familiar, but honestly, it's not our favorite and this is why. If you're new to PC building and you're assembling an AMD system, which many of you probably are, there's a potential for uneven pressure or even air pockets here if you don't get the mounting right. And ultimately that can result in higher temps if you aren't careful. With all that in mind, there's a lot to consider with installation. While none of this is bad or even unique to the Frozen Note, these are things to be aware of. One of the big takeaways here is to either choose a cooler that's mounting is a bit more forgiving or plan on watching a tutorial as you carefully install this one. Fortunately, Thermalrite actually has one of those and you can see it where I'm showing it to you right here. On top of that, whether it's your first build or your 50th, we have a ton of background knowledge that we'd love to share with you so that you can confidently go into your build, just like this video right here. And while you're doing your homework, why don't you go ahead and get yourself an education by liking, subscribing, and hitting those notification bells, both here at Robitech and Robitech Live for even more great PC building content. With installation out of the way, let's take a look at how exactly the Frozen Note goes about freezing the night. Starting with the pump, it's rated to spin up to 5,300 RPM. So even though it's not built into the water block itself, it seems plenty fast on paper for different mounting operations and shouldn't have any trouble circulating water throughout the system. The radiator is a standard size and includes mounting points to easily install in any case that supports a 360 millimeter AIO. It's not even exceptionally thick at 27 millimeters, even with the fans mounted, which are about 25 millimeters thick themselves. From a spec standpoint, the Frozen Notes fans are decent and an improvement over the Aqua Elite, which we had referenced earlier. They can reach up to 2000 RPM and move just over 72 CFM at that speed. Since they're mounted on a radiator, what matters even more is the static pressure. Fortunately, these are bumped up from the Aqua Elite coming in at 2.87 millimeter H2O. While these aren't class leading numbers, they aren't bad for what you're paying for. And on paper, they look like enough to keep an even high performance CPU cool. But like installation, things aren't as simple as they seem written out on a product page. So quality, pricing, and blingy RGB might be enough to make a good first impression, but even the best looking AIO isn't worth that much if it doesn't do its job well. So let's talk about how it performs. As a reminder, we test all of our AIOs and Intel and AMD test benches using mid-range CPUs to represent mainstream systems on both platforms. For Intel, we used a Core i7-14700K, and for AMD, a Ryzen 7 7700X. Other components in both systems are evenly matched, and the same tests are run on each so you can make the best decision for your processor of choice. Starting with Intel, the Frozen Note offered good results considering how low cost it is. It's squarely felt in the middle of the pack for an idle temperature averaging just below 28 degrees Celsius, but it climbed the rankings in the right direction once we turned up the heat. Under load testing, we recorded average temperatures just below 80 degrees Celsius, putting it a few degrees below the slightly cheaper Thermalrite Aqua Elite 360 and only a degree warmer than the popular and five times more expensive NZXT Kraken Elite. And with where it lands on charts, it might provide some potential for light overclocking. In Cinebench, the results are much the same. Now margins are obviously tight on this test, but with a score of 33,650, that score puts the Frozen Note in the top five of nearly two dozen AIOs we've tested on the bench. Those results are impressive for a $60 cooler, but will it win any awards for its power draw? With readings showing almost four watts at idle and slightly over 236 watts under load, it doesn't do too bad for itself, but it's not winning any medals. In gaming, the Frozen Note has a bit more chill. In our test, it averaged just under 50 degrees, which is well below the thermal limits of the 14700K. These numbers sandwiched it in between coolers like the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Black and the Lee & Lee HydroShift 360S. Overall performance on Intel is in the middle of the road in comparison to other AIOs, so much so that it almost got cited for jaywalking. However, when we shift to AMD, things got strange with the Frozen Note. Performance is both inconsistent and notably worse than on Intel, despite running at a lower wattage. Things started with a decent average temp under 38 degrees Celsius while idle, which is in line with what we would expect from an AIO that's not being taxed on the platform. But putting our 7700X under pressure turned things on their head with the worst result we've seen from an AIO with our current benchmark setup. Pushed to its limit, the Frozen Note allowed our 7700X to reach an average temperature just below 93 degrees Celsius, which approaches TJ Maxx like a zealous shopper from a Christmas bonus burning a hole in their pocket. And yes, we did check to make sure it was properly seated. We retested over and over again. 
these were just the numbers. While seeing these temps on a 7000 series CPU is not unusual, these results are definitely on the warm side under load. For comparison's sakes, Thermalrite's own Aqua Elite, which you can pick up for right around the same price, was nearly six degrees cooler. Then when we looked at Cinebench, the Frozen Note goes right back to the middle of the pack. In our Cinebench run, it earned a score of 19,560. That landed the Frozen Note a hair breadths away from the Aqua Elite, but this is a crowded chart when we look at the scores. Gaming on AMD resulted in higher temps as well, but well below the point of concern here. Average temperatures essentially tied with the Fractal Lumen and the Aqua Elite, but the Frozen Note did pull slightly higher temperatures overall. Rounding out our data with power draw, the Frozen Note kept its midfield position against all-in-one coolers. It's electrifyingly average with an idle draw averaging just below 26 watts and full load jumping to just over 144 watts. For gaming, it split the difference, drawing just above 76 watts. Now, all of that heat generated falls to the radiator fans, but will the fan and pump noise make the Frozen Night a silent one? That's the question, and by popular demand, answering it's becoming a regular part of our testing. Remember the Frozen Note's fans do work hard and they have a max speed of 2000 RPM, which you might expect them to blow like a winter's gale, but instead it's more like a bluster that fades into the background when you turn the volume up a couple of notches. At 50% speed, similar to what you'd see from gaming or day-to-day -day use, they're a bit higher than average, measuring just under 50 decibels. At full speed, which you'll probably be running if you're running an AMD CPU under load, then you're basically gonna be looking at around 65 decibels, which is right in the middle of our data. So you're looking at noise levels between a quiet conversation and flushing of a toilet which I really do hope are two separate events. In other words, you'll be hearing these fans at 100% speed, but if you're gaming or doing a mixed workload, they probably won't be peaking and you probably won't be noticing them any more than your case fans. So with energetically middling results like these, is the Thermalrite Frozen Note worth its price to ride? That's more complicated. If you're looking at the cost, its sub $60 price does a lot of heavy lifting to make it appear like a good value. And especially if you happen to be running an Intel CPU. We rank all of the coolers we test by their overall value using the formula that allows us to balance thermal results with pricing. Here's the fancy math. This gives us a dollars per degree of cooling value, which we can then score and compare. In this case, the Frozen Note comes in with a score of 2.7, making the Frozen Note our value leader with this metric. One thing worth noting as we look at these charts, we've updated to them since our last AIO review. So some of these numbers and positions may look a little bit different. The numbers in this chart right here are the most up-to-date figures. But after spending time with the Frozen Note with all the test runs, all the data collected, and an installer to complete, is the Thermalrite Frozen Note worthy of becoming your next AIO, or is it better being left on ice? As we consider where to land with this one, we have mixed feelings. If you're running an Intel machine, the Note is not a class-leading AIO, but for $60, you get what you pay for. It looks good for the price, it has performance that's decent enough to let your system stretch its leg, and it's nearly untouchable in our value proposition charts. And speaking of value, it's also worth noting that the Frozen Note comes with thermal paste and a splitter cable to connect all three fans to a single fan header, which doesn't sound like anything special until you consider this. While these things are typically standard with most modern AIOs, Thermorite could have, like, pretty much cut costs by passing the responsibility of buying these extras onto the consumer, but they didn't. Is this the bare minimum or worthy of respect? But when we look at the broader picture, the Frozen Note is an aggressively average AIO with a number of caveats. And these caveats keep it from being the best choice, especially for new builders that might be looking for a way to save a few dollars to reinvest in other parts of their system. Between the potential for uneven pressure with the two-point mounting system on AMD, no pre-applied thermal paste, which could be a pro or con, and the extra steps to connect and cable manage the Frozen Note's fan and RGB cable, this AIO is not as beginner friendly as it could be. More worrying is the wild spike we saw when we put our Ryzen 7 7700X under load. These results were both repeatable and a bit worrying if you're someone who needs your CPU to do a lot of heavy lifting. That being said, this concern doesn't matter if all you're doing with your PC is gaming. So where does that actually leave us? When we break it all down and consider the whole picture, there's a lot of challenges the Frozen Note faces, especially on the AMD side. However, if you're looking at cooling an Intel-based system, the Frozen Note will get the job done. Remember, we're looking at a $60 AIO here. While it may be hard to recommend for users who need to keep their CPU heat under wraps, it'll do okay, provided that you actually get it installed right the first time. And remember, you can always check out the Aqua Elite, which is only $5 more and didn't have a lot of these problems. 
And that's where we land with the Thermalright Frozen Note and where our opinions come to an end. But what we really wanna hear is what you think in the comments below. Is sitting right in the middle a livable trait or is it okay to save a few dollars? And should RGBception be Christopher Nolan's next thriller? Let us know down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring the notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this here on Roby Tech. And also make sure you do it over at Roby Tech Live. And if you wanna continue the conversation, maybe you wanna ask some questions about whether this is the right button budget option for you, or you want to look at other AIOs, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash robytech. It's an amazing place to meet other tech and PC enthusiasts who love to talk about stuff like this. And you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, make sure you follow us on all the other socials absolutely everywhere. If you've made it this far, I want to say a huge thank you for sticking with me throughout this video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.